به بیت هم هنه به مکینا و این به من نیام سفراله هنو اینترنیت سکالو درس ای بی اس اورو تاله به سلک به تابلیت به کمپیوتر به تلویزیونم هنه به من نیام اینترنیت متقام همی از چلی مکنانیا مساله لای ی ای بی اس پلاس نیا راست سرچ تو چه مکاتات لیچلالو ای بی اس پلاسی تواله که علم اگفای سرچ تو به تج آماری ی هر راست فیلم نا موسیقیات آبی اچن اگاتو متوال تدا ان زین مرت سوست تعبیش لمانیت یمیت ابک ابو بکن سلاس سانتیم هم میمولا مالاتم بار سمت کس دانست اینکفیا بچانو لامت کفل لگونم دگمو هلا تورن به نز آنچال موتالن www.ebstv.tv در اجازه لای به مقدار get ebs یا میلان سیچانو و در ebs iptv یا ملکاتش گذشته گفتو ساین ادار کالو مرد آو بسیل کو اندروید سمارت فون که هونه گوگل پلی استور لای ایبیس تی وی بلاویز آخونا یفلگو خزیم انستال میلان به مدرن یا ایبیس یک اتاق پروگرام سرچت یا ایبیس سینما انا یا ایبیس موسیقی لهرا سات آمارت آوی ملکاتو بک اتاق به تلویزیون مسکوت پروگرام رو چون مکت اتال کاش آو کابل دنستن بیت کاسه نیو تیزمانو تکنولوژی آن دوی هونو گوگل تی وی متاق میچلالو انگری آهن ایبیس به جونو ایبیس یه سرنا یه بیت سبو تکدامی مرچا. سلام تن است این تمرکز و چرچن سلام و ملیت آکاسانی سامن تایو تکتوپیسالمن به ایبیس تجمرات کدیم ما کلاچن دکتر جرانی نیلسون عالا کنیگاهونو به گدینت اندان دیهوتون لمد نا اکادمیکلی پروفشنالی از عالا فاتشون نگرود چه لاتچ اوتان دیوند مو که ایتوبی اگر بات آمی میزان مربوط نگر عالا اسمو سنگرچو دی یه چیزی گر لمن دیتولی هونال و دو حالا لیمت آب بذارلو تنش لاست او کاتش دلش بود نه کات تا کسی گاچ آب تاچن نمی کات لالن دکتر جلانی با هم ساعت با هاروارد یونیورسیتی با سکول اف انجینیری و اپلایت ساینس یا با دات پروفسور نت یا گله گله گنجان سوس دیگری هچون با ملوک گری با دیتو با آمریکا میون با عالم لای بات آم پرستیجیس می نو بات آم کات کبرو یه تکنولوژی اینستیتیوشن MIT ماساچوستس اینستیتیو اف تکنولوژی سوست نم دیگری هچون کازات کبلوان یه باشتر اف ساینس دیگری هم با ولت شی آمیست یه ماستر اف ساینس دیگری هم با ولت شی دست کازار مو یه پی اچ دی هم با ولت شی آسران دامات مرا تکبلوان هیس فرست دیگری دبل میجر نیاد در رگو انگلیش با ماتمریکس نه کامپیوتر ساینس ماستر سن نه پی اچ دی هم دمو با کامپیوتر ساینس چار رسوال ماله تنو گریخ ریسرچ ورکو چالوت وان نافوکسو یا لارج دیتا نای های دیمنشنال دیتا سه تو چین پروسس یه میارگ الگوریتم گریخ بهم به مسرات به سولاین ریسرچون یه سر رام ماله که زیم بته چه ماری بزو آوردو چین تکمیل وان گریم لامزر زر بات آم بزو ناتوی تو سمت لامت که ولی اهل لامت لامت کم یه اهل NSF Career Award یه میبال تکمیل وان دیونامو جورج ام سپرالز آورد به ولت شاسراند بیست ریهونه دکترال تئوریس اند مسرات بازیم آورت کابلال که ایمایتی کازیم بته چه ماری دموی با IBM ریسرچ روست به مسرات پات گولبرت میموریال بیست پر آوردن اتشار دموال کازیم بته چه ماری پاتن توجه نالی رو چیم بذار آورد رو چالوت لمس تاکی هالنگری هنیال دکتر جلانی تو یاد دگو با سنت تامسی میبالی آمریکا گزات علا ایرلند نو دستیت نو بزنه یاد دگو نگر گن ادمیو ود ل کالج و میبک آگزی ود وان نو ود مینلند و ود یو اس به ممتاز گریخ تم یه کفتن عظم برتون که دنبال کار پاچو امایتی تکرار توان مالد. دکتر جلانی به ناتو ایتالیا وینو لذت نکه دنبال زم در که ایتالیا گل کوچو به آب باتو دم مو آفریکان آمریکان نو مالد نو. گریخ کزی به تجمع ماری دکتر جلانی و در ایتالیا به آم بزرگ زی به تلویزیون کزی با آمد به مهید ل های سکول تماریوچ یا کود کورس یا سمر کمپ به مدرگ یا کود اندیش می‌دهم. می‌سازیم یه کامپیوتر کود یا استم را، وبسایت ما رو addiscoder.com بته رو. یه می‌استم را چون تمرکز کرد. دیسا باسیم تا اتمای چرالا. چون کسی بهت چه ماری دمو به آموزش کلو نب مکال اینورسیتی یا کامپیوتر ساینس دپارتمنت لکچر سرتوان دستمانی اساس لمنیا کلو تماریوچ ماند. 
በዚህ በሰመር ላይ መጥቶ ከሚያስተምራችሁ ተማሪዎች ውስጥ የተወሰኑት ደግሞ አዲስ አበባ መጥቶ ማለት ነው ስኮላርሺፕ አግኝተዋል በጣም ፕሬስቲጂስ የሆኑ ዩኒቨርሲቲዎች MIT Harvard Princeton Columbia Brown Trinity College Jacobs and uh, NYU Abu Dhabi እንዲሁም ሌሎች ብዙ ኮሌጆች ውስጥ ስኮላርሺፕ ያገኙ ተማሪዎችም አሉት ማለት ነው ኮርሱን ከመሰጣችሁ እንግዲህ ዳክተር ጀላኒ ከኔጋ ነው ያለው የህይወት ጉዞን ለመጫወት ፈቃደኛ ሆኖ ስለመጣ በጣም አመሰግናለሁ ዳክተር ጀላኒ ስለጋብ ስክሪን በጣም አመሰግናለሁ ቴንክ ዩ ዳክተር ጀላኒ እንግዲህ ወደ ቀጥታ ወደ ጫዋታችን ነው የምንገባው እና ከአካዳሚክ ላይፍ ነው የምጀምረው እንግዲህ ወደ ጥያቄያችን ከመጓታችን በፊት ዶክተር ጀላኒ አማርኛ ትንሽ ትንሽ ሰማ ለመናገርን ትንሽ ትንሽ ይናገራል ስለዚህ ካንቨርሴሽኑ በብዛት እንግሊዝኛ ኢንቮልቭ ያደርጋል ስለዚህ ሆፕፉሊ የሚናገራቸውን ቁም ነገሮች ለመጨበጥ ትችላላችሁ ብዬ ተስፋ ያደርጋለሁ ሶ ከአካዳሚክ ላይፍ እና ወራ መጨም ቀደም እንዳልኩት 3 ዲግሪ ነው የወሰርከው በጣም ወጣት ነህ እንግዲህ እና እንዴት ነው ሃዋት ዩ አካዳሚክ ላይፍ ወደ ኮምፒውተር ሳይንስ እንዴት ልትገባቻልክ ከዚህ በተጨማሪ 3ቱንም ዲግሪ ነህ from one of the most prestigious school in in, in the world to say in technology MIT and data gaining yes I, i first got interested in computer science and math well computer science let's say from video games actually so i had i used to play games since um since i was 4 years old i had i got a nintendo from as a gift and i kept i kept going and um when i was 10 years old i had internet access at home and i used to visit websites and then click you know right click and view source and i would see the html and i realized that html is what you can use to make websites so i started learning from viewing sources sources of various websites and then i remember when i was 12 uh with with my parents we went to the states and i bought this book from a bookstore in html and i took it home with me we didn't have bookstores that sold such books uh, where i where i grew up and i studied that And again when I was 16 we went to the states I bought a book on C++ C programming bought that brought it home and then I studied that as well. And so I really enjoyed that. I always enjoyed math class ever since I was a little kid. And it's funny I, I had never heard of MIT. It's, I was very um I was somehow in a bubble. There were a lot there were a lot of things that I didn't know. Um and my dad when I was a senior in high school he bought a college ranking magazine and he gave it to me. and he said you know you should look at this and i and, and decide a school and start applying and i opened it and i saw you know at that time MIT was ranked first in both math and computer science so i applied to MIT and then i got in so i went you got but accepted i, I got so it yeah but nerd, so what was the entry criteria i mean you got a good sat or what was it um yeah so they, you know you have to submit your sats sat2s you have to write essays you have to get recommendation letters um it's been a while so i don't remember all the details but yeah I'm, i went through the you know the standard uh application i think i applied early they had an early application uh, so it was a full scholarship no it wasn't no so mit actually um they don't give academic they don't give scholarships for academic performance only need based scholarships so the amount of money they give you is just completely a function of your family income etc so wow. um but yeah i think speaking to that i think it's uh even there are many students there who come even straight from ethiopia and don't pay a cent because need based yeah mit is completely need based so i want you know i want to encourage people anyone who's interested um there are a few schools like that they call them need blind they have need blind admissions mit harvard is like that too i believe princeton is like that uh, i'm not sure the full list but you know do a search for need blind admissions those need schools blind admissions. need blind that's right okay all right we're screen line and so forth and giddy na betam giddy bamarnya min ibalal qalam which means extremely intelligent so qalam nabarku malatu men giddy i and nabarku okay let's talk about your professional life now right now giddy master qaddem magbi alay inde tenagerkut you currently serving as a assistant professor at one of the finest school giddy uh, on the planet maybe <laughs> so harvard so uh, tell us about uh, your career Oh, how I how I became Yeah, how you be, how you decide to become academic instead of uh, okay. industry professional. Yeah. Okay, so um you know, when I got to MIT, um I I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. I was a double major in math computer science. I knew I wanted to do that. But, you know, what career path that I want, I, I didn't really think too much about that. Um I was just, you know, really having a good time learning a lot. I was I was being exposed to so much that I that I didn't know before. Um I did some internships. 
like working with professors, doing research with professors. I did one internship at Toshiba. Um, I, and then the summer after I graduated, I did an internship at Google. And you know, I, was, I wasn't completely decided between going the academic route versus going into industry. Um, but I think you know, when I got a taste of industry, I just realized that kind of my passion was for, I would say, kind of basic research, basic questions. And um, I think that interest in basic research is what led me to go the academic route. So I, I um, applied to PhD programs. Um, you know, I, went, I stayed at MIT for my PhD. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I really got into algorithms, so. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about that. We'll talk about that, yeah. yeah. But, so, um, yeah, so when I did my PhD, uh, I did some more research internships focused on my, P my PhD research area, um, two at IBM and one at Microsoft. And, you know, my last year of the PhD program, I applied in parallel. I applied to some academic positions, like, the, like to Harvard, for example, but I also applied to some research labs like Microsoft Research, IBM Research. Mm. They have labs there that function a lot like academia. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like you're in an academic bubble inside industry, even though it's part of a company. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoy Harvard. So, so that's, you that's love teaching. You love giving yeah. back, I guess. Oh, so, I definitely love teaching. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, but what if it? You're asking Bridget business. Uh, are you really interested in towards your tenure track and in becoming a full professor? What's your plan in the future? At least, at, you know, I don't know about far in the future, but at least at this point, I don't have any thoughts on, uh, I don't have any thoughts to make a company, so. Yeah. professional life professor What kind of suggestion and advice would you give for students who, want, who are aspired by you know, science and computer science and engineering and to become professionals or academics. Uh, what do you advise? Any suggestion, advice, resource that you can give? I know you gave one resource, how to, you know, how to mm -hmm. apply for MIT. Yeah. But any, 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 any suggestion, advice, resource? Um, one thing I can say, one thing that helped me a lot um, when I was an undergraduate was to train myself in kind of programming slash algorithms. So there are lots of websites. One, one thing that's nice about you know, computer science compared with, say, many other fields is many other fields, like let's say you, wanna, let's say you want to do a um, form of engineering, okay, civil engineering or some other form of engineering. You know, it's really hard to just go out and practice building bridges or roads. You, know, you, know, you need raw materials to do that. You need money. You need resources. But with computer science, all you really need is access to a computer with, with an internet connection. And you can go and learn things online and then practice on your own computer. So there were lots of websites that I found when I was an undergrad that had thousands upon thousands of problems that you could you know, train yourself solving. And, and there were also some competitions that, were, that revolved around these problems. So I, um, I used to spend a lot of time on those websites really just training myself. And I think, um, Actually, actually, the T-shirt I'm wearing right now is is from one of those con one one of those uh, websites. Okay. Yeah. It says so Top Coder. Top Coder. Okay. Yeah. So that you know, there are several several sites. Top Coder was a really nice one. There are several others. Um, so I think if you go to if anyone watching this goes to oddiscoder.com, at the very bottom, I have several links to a lot of these websites. Resources. And, yeah, these resources you can go and train. Um, for free, right? Oh, they're all they're all for free. In fact, some of them even pay you if you do well. Yeah. Um, right. So th those websites, you know, they assume you know the basics of programming, and then they, they really like train you and make you, you know, more. They build mastery, and if you just want to start off learning programming, you know, from the beginning, there are also many resources online that you know, help you learn how to program. Okay, wonderful. So while we talk about IT and then you know this computer science topic, yeah. I'm going to ask you on something that you are you know good at, right? So. I'm going to ask this on behalf of my viewers. So, I mean, they keep hearing algorithm and, and you know, computer programming. When you enter something on the computer, it spits out, you know, some result. You access internet, you watch videos, you solve complex mathematical, you know, problems. What is this? So what is algorithm? I, I think me and you were talking about earlier that there yeah. is maybe an Amharic term for it, slate. But uh, uh, slate is like calculation. Algorithm <laughs> is 
Uh, it comes from calculation, but yeah. yeah. But what's algorithm? I and mean, then how does a computer programming yeah. work to solve any kind of issues at this point, right? So mm -hmm. can you explain this in a, in a layman's term, like a sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, so an algorithm is just a procedure for carrying out some task. You know, it's not even you don't need a, a computer, a personal computer, to 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 carry out an algorithm. Um, so you know, the usual go-to example. I use, and it's a popular example people use to describe algorithms, is the following. So usually an algorithm takes as input, you know, takes, it, takes some input and produces some output. Okay? So it solves some problem like that. So here's an example of a problem. Okay? The input is I give you, you're the algorithm for me, I give you a phone book, and then I also give you a name. Okay? And then you have to give me back that person's number or tell me that they're not in the phone book. So there are many ways of solving this problem, and you know, many algorithms that solve this problem. An algorithm is just a way to solve a problem. So you know, one algorithm is you open up to page one, you look for the name, oh, it's not there. You flip to page two, it's not there. You flip to page three, you keep flipping until finally you find it, and then you say, OK, this is the number. Or maybe you pass it and you realize, OK, this person's not here. So if the, if the phone book is 1,000 pages, you know, if you're unlucky, um, it can take you a thousand steps. Okay, there's another algorithm called binary search. Right, no one would actually search for a name in a phone book like that. Right, so there's another algorithm called binary search, which does which operates as follows. So you take the phone book, you open it to the middle, page 500. Okay, let's say I'm searching for Nelson. You're searching for my name. You open to page 500, and when you open it, you see uh, the last name Melrose. Okay, and then you say, oh, uh, I haven't. I haven't gone far enough. It must be in the second half of the phone book. So you can essentially take the first half and throw it away. You can take that phone book, rip it in half, and just throw away the first half. And now you're left with a phone book with 500 pages, right? Then you can do the same thing to that 500-page phone book. Open it to the middle. Then you see a name, you know, Peterson. You're like, oh, I've gone too far. You can rip it in half and throw away the second half. Now you have 250 pages. And if you do the calculation, you're guaranteed to find, you know, anyone's name with this procedure in at most 10 steps. Right? So as opposed to 1,000 steps, which is algorithm 1, this algorithm 2 is taking 10 steps. And as someone who studies algorithms as a field, what you, what you do is you look at various computational problems, and you try and come up with an algorithm that's as efficient as possible, like takes as few steps as possible. Quickest. Yeah, the quickest. Oh, yeah. Just, you can just simply trying to solve a problem in a very simple step or in a shorter step, right? Yeah, a few, few number of steps. So, net. <laughs> yeah, net. yeah, there yeah. you go. So computer programming is, I, I think algorithm is the underlying foundation for any kind of computer programming. Is it fair to say? I think, yeah, I think algorithms really plays a very important role in computer science. I mean, algorithms is at the heart of computation itself. Wonderful. So I hope you uh, algorithm and not because I'm the algorithm like I'm the so let me start for computer program, which basically the rest are pretty much technical, right? Depending on the programming language, you have to learn the syntax, you know, C++, Visual Basic, Java, and whatnot. Yeah. But the foundation of coming up with that problem solving skill, as you say, doesn't even need a computer. <laughs> yeah, right, that's right. So that, that's really well said. So now let me take you to Ethiopia, because right. <laughs> I think that's what people want to hear, because so uh, as I introduced you uh, earlier, uh, you traveled to Ethiopia frequently, maybe in the past couple of years, a uh, couple of times in a year. Yeah, so, like twice uh, a year. Yeah. And uh, you, you particularly invest on high school students, right? Yeah, so I did one, so I guess in 2011 I taught this course. Uh, it was hosted at Amis Kilo. Um, co-organized with someone there named Naol, um, but yeah, it was it was at Amis Kilo, but the students were high school students. High school students. They were high school students. And then you were basically teaching them, you know, how to develop an algorithm, and then on any particular programming language, or so I, I almost all the students didn't have any programming experience, so I I, ch I chose a programming language that I thought was you know the easiest to pick up from Which not is? having background. For, uh, I, I chose Python, Python in that class. Okay. It's open source too, so it can be easily, you know, found and installed. I guess, right? Yeah, yeah that's true. It is easy. Yeah, it's easily installed. So um, how was it? Tell us about your experience. How the ch what the challenges were. 
how yeah. the students received your your teaching, your courses, and in how they improved themselves in the, in the field of you know computer science. Right. So I guess uh, it was my last semester of PhD when I was thinking of teaching this class. Um, you know, I was I was going to have a full summer break between the end of PhD and the beginning of my of, of working. So I thought I wanted to go visit Ethiopia, and um, I decided to. And then, kind of a couple of weeks later, I said, "Oh, if I'm going to be in Ethiopia for such a long time, I was there for six weeks. You know, let me think of something to do." While was I'm that your first time? It was not my first time. Okay, no, it was not my first time. But it was it was the first time I was there for such a long time. Okay, yeah. Um, so I was thinking, you know, let me think of, you know, what, what what are the things I can do while I'm there. So I started brainstorming. Eventually, I came to this, uh, you know, maybe teach a high school class, and um, I was very lucky that. Various people were willing to help me in, in doing this. So I mentioned Naol was helped me organize things because he was at Amis Kilo. He was lecturing. He was also doing his masters at the time. Um, I you know I, I cold called I think Shagat FM and Afro FM. They both were willing to you know advertise the Take course the for free, yeah. get the word out. And I think Naol even went on Afro FM and did an interview to get That's the word wonderful. out. And also just v through various connections, a friend of mine, uh, Kale Bayalo, his his relative was uh, like a kind of a college recruiter who was there and who had lots of connections to high school, so she helped me advertise it too. Wonderful. And I had this website. So yeah, the, um, actually getting the word out, because I was in Boston, right? I was, I was not in Ethiopia. Get, just Weird getting part. the word out yeah. um, was the hardest part, definitely, because I'd never done something like this before. I had no connections. Um, I was essentially just you know, hoping to run into people who could help me make it happen. Um, and yeah, luckily it, it, it worked out. How was the turn out? Um, so, you know, they, they gave me a room, I missed Kilo at first, they gave me a room that held 50 students. But then the number of students who signed up were, it was probably close to 200 or wow. something like that, who signed up online. Yeah. And then in addition to that, another friend of mine, his uh, cousin, um, he's a, his, my friend's cousin is a lecturer at uh, Addis Ababa University in Lidata. Okay. And, through some connections of his, he found like another group of you know, 150 to 200 students who were interested. But at that point, I told him like, overflow. Yeah, it's just I don't have any room anymore. So you you received all the 350. So, no, so the, so I, I told him that I didn't have room for for those students. I, unfortunately, I mean, I wish I could take you know everybody. It's just I just had hard you know the size it's of the organized. room. Is, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so um, the day one, so, you know, of the, of everyone who signed up online, you know, some people signed up online but didn't actually come. So the number of people who actually came was probably 120 or so the first day, or somewhere in the low hundreds, um, hundred something. Uh, and then they gave me a bigger room just day one because they couldn't fit. And then even in the bigger room, people were standing in the back. Um, and then you know, finally at the end, I started taking attendance. Finally at the end, the number of people who stayed the whole time because it was a four-week class, and it met every single day, well, five days a week. Two, five days for four five weeks. days a week for four weeks, two and a half hours a day. That's intense. Yeah, so you know, some people, I guess, it was like too too big of a time commitment. So it, it narrowed down eventually to eighty three, eighty three people committed finished, committed yeah, stayed you know committed students. Um, How was it? So what did was, they get from that? And then what was what was the next step for them? So the next step. So okay, so they're all high school students. There might have been. I think there was one eighth grader, in fact, too, but mostly high school students. Um, so I introduced them to, to programming, to Python, and then also started teaching algorithms. I, you know, I really only taught Python because I wanted them to know what programming was before I taught algorithms. Yes. Um, and the way the class was structured, each day one hour would be me lecturing at, at the Blackboard. And then um, for an hour and a half after that, I would have them in the computer lab solving problems. So I made a bunch of exercises for them, and they would have to code things up and wa and watch their code run on these yes. uh, for that problem. And I, I was very happy, you know, very grateful that Ms. Kilo was willing to provide these facilities. I mean, they were very nice computers. I think they gave us, in fact, there's like the usual um, computer lab that the students use, that the college students use. Yeah. But then there's like the faculty. Computer wow. lab with like the brand new computers, the high et performing ones. Yeah, so and we got they gave they let us use those computers. That's amazing. Which, yeah, I was that's, really that's yeah. I was really happy. Does yeah got any Amiskin University in the Tamil country? Similar name, so good. Yeah, the legal law. That I'm that I'm just mean again. All right, go on. Yeah, very thankful. Um, yeah, so you know, toward the so I I did this for four weeks, and then I think the last day I thought you know in addition to just wrapping up the class. 
I wanted to give them some tips about, you know, many of them were interested in applying to US universities or abroad, but um, not everyone knew kind of the process. Uh, you know, even the timeline, like when are you supposed to apply, what tests are you supposed to take, and when do you take them? So I spent a little time in the last lecture just telling them about that. And you know, a lot of them also, I told them they're free to contact me. Some of them, you know, some of them add me to Facebook or they, they email me with questions. Any question, computer science questions, college related questions. Many of them asked me if, um, if I can read their essays, college essays, and provide them some, some comments. So yeah, I mean, um, and many of them ended up applying to, to schools and getting in and getting you know, good scholarships. So that was really great. And also so the, wonderful to see, to watch. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was fun, yeah. And I mean, also the last day, um, we even had a, a mini kind of graduation ceremony where <laughs> the, um, uh, the head of the electrical engineering department, as well as the, at that time, the head of Amis Kilo itself, the entire campus, they were both were there. And we kind of called the students up one by one and gave them certificates. Um, so that was, that was also nice. That's wonderful. And in, besides that, you've also uh, lectured for the university students, right? At oh, right. Uh, the yeah, science, yeah. Fac uh, right. I, you know, science faculty and also uh, McAlee University, right? No, uh, yeah, so McAlee University. So it's um, this school, McAlee Institute of Technology, yeah. which I think now is part of, it used to, it started off at kind of its own independent okay, institution. Now it's, it's, and now it's, it's I think, body. a part of uh, McAlee University. Okay, what was, what level was, uh, the, you know, the So the that lecture. was not a class, that was just like a, a lecture. That just I a lecture in a hall. A research lecture in yeah. a hall, yeah. Okay, how, how did it go, how was it? How was your yeah, experience? Were, yeah, it was, it was great, I enjoyed it. Yeah.